So we're continuing our studies here at the Shala of our breath, of course, and um, also with the springtime, we've been studying uh, miracles and looking at all the miracles of spring that we're surrounded by every day. We read Walt Whitman, and I asked you guys to write your own miracle sequel to Walt Whitman's um, and also submit some foot photography of the wildflowers that are in bloom. And we should have got a picture of your caterpillar. Oh, good. OK, so do we send it in? OK, so be on the lookout for Megan's caterpillar. It's fuzzy. And what are the colors? Green and purplish? OK. Definitely a miracle. So one of my favorite miracles is a miracle of metamorphosis of the little cute caterpillar turning into the butterfly. So to begin our conference this week, I'm going to read one of my favorite passages from the Tao Te Ching um, to, to start us off. So I really like to think of um, the passages from the Tao Te Ching sort of as poetry. And if I were to have read this to you 20 years ago, I know some of you have heard it for the last 10 years that have been studying with me. I feel like it always speaks to you differently at different chapters of your life. Um, if I read this to you again five years from now, it might have a different message for you than it does today. So as with good poetry, close your eyes and just let this passage um, speak to you. The translator on this particular um, passage is Dorian Israel, which to me always makes a difference who translates the um, Tao Te Ching. I feel like this is really um, one of my favorite translations. The Tao turns the tides and changes caterpillars into butterflies. Do you truly believe that it has less magic, mystery, or meaning in store for you? Pay attention to what within you is beginning to awaken. The caterpillar can feel the essence of the butterfly even before it begins to emerge. Remember, butterflies are never born on the ground. This type of total transformation occurs only after an arduous climb up the trunk of a tree and a perilous trip out into the barest branch. Risk is a cost of anything of real value. Create your own chrysalis of consciousness, a protective cocoon in which you realize yourself more holy, dawning as a radiant light, awakening others in the same way. So the miracle of the, um, the butterfly is sort of beyond science. Um, in particular, here at the Shala, we've studied the monarch um, over the past, I think, four or five years. So we'll, this spring, be looking at some of the specifics on why the butterfly metamorphosis is so magical, sort of um, beyond some, some of it a little beyond even scientific understanding. Um, first, you know, the, uh, the caterpillar is hatched from an egg, the monarch anyway, and then spends its first couple weeks Basically, I, I really love this about the monarch is just eating and eating and pooping and eating and eating and pooping and and they just like grow like in front of your eyes. They're just munching the leaf and moving on to the next leaf and you can just kind of see them get fatter and fatter and fatter over the couple weeks and um, and then just miraculously all of a sudden one day it just decides it's finished eating and it's going to make its journey out until that barest branch that Dorian refers to and um, make its journey to begin the um, making of the chrysalis. And I'm always kind of fascinated by like, how does the caterpillar know when it's done eating? I mean, that's all it's ever done since it hatched, you know, is eat. Um, but it's like, it's done, boom, and it goes and makes that journey. The other thing that I think is interesting is that that it has to make that journey out onto a branch, that it can't just plop its caterpillar butt down in the dirt and start making its chrysalis, right? It, it has to literally go out there in order for it to hang for the full process to happen. Have you guys ever seen the monarch chrysalis? It's this amazing shade of green, almost like Jack's um, shirt color. It's really vibrant and every single chrysalis has this beautiful gold, stripe at the top. Do you remember that? Have you guys seen the chrysalis? It, it's so delicate and beautiful. It almost looks like a little fairy came at night and just painted this beautiful stripe at the top so perfectly. And then during the process, um, it's this beautiful green for weeks and then all of a sudden it starts to turn dark until it's black. And then when the butterfly is about ready, it's, um, it becomes a little bit translucent and 
Has anyone ever seen a, a monarch actually come from um, come out of the pod before? You have. Oh, okay. Has anybody else seen it? Did you? Okay, well, I was going to say a couple years ago. Obviously, I've been obsessed with the monarchs for a few years. I was. It was so perfect timing. I was only have Friday mornings off, right? And I was doing my devotion. I had been watching the little caterpillars like every day in their pods, and um, all of a sudden, this one pod was stretching a little bit, and I, it was becoming translucent, and I could just start to see the colors of the monarch wing. And, um, and then I saw one of the edges of the wings start to poke through and I grabbed my phone because I wanted my mom to see it and was able to video it for her. And, and I have to tell you, I, it's not the greatest video, obviously, it's just me and my phone screaming in the background. Um, but it was so magical. It, it was, it's just such a beautiful thing. I, I get choked up when I even think about it because the, the butterflies, wings start to expand and like come down and push down through the chrysalis as they expand. Um, the butterfly kind of drops out of it from the bottom and then it stays there for a little bit, just flapping its wings to dry the wings before it takes flight. And it's, it's really, if you want to like just be in the presence of a miracle, that there it is. Um, but so this week I really want to say like, as Dorian did, if the butterfly is such a miracle, what greater miracle are each of you? And, and that's really um, what I'd like you to sit with this week. Uh, the other day, it was Saturday, we were having an early morning Mysore, and it was just it's so beautiful in the morning. The sun's kind of coming in, and it's really quiet, and there's just a sound of everybody breathing. And I was just struck by how beautiful everybody was. Everyone was in their own poses, breathing at their own pace, and some people in headstand, other people in up dog, and twisting in poses. And I thought, man, everyone is just so vibrant and, and glorious and beautiful, and so unaware of yourself right now. You know, it's like I think everyone sometimes you know, are just so doing what we do, and we're used to seeing everyone else around us. We don't realize how incredible the practice is, and how really beautiful the practice is, and the yoga poses himself have such a beauty um, to them. And, and I was thinking about this um, passage by Dorian and thinking, wow, what a miracle everybody is. And um, I was just thinking uh, if we could just, I'll just choose Gina as an example. If I could just choose 100 people all over the United States that were Gina's age and about her size or whatever, Gina would like be at the top of that you know, as far as health. She'd be like holding the bar really high for everybody. You know, just from her health, of, from her yoga practice and her, you know what we do here to keep our minds beautiful and focused and on our spiritual evolution. And, uh, and I think sometimes we take that for granted. You know, we look around the room and see everybody doing what we're doing or maybe we're like, oh, I want to have a back bend like her or I want to be able to do my headstand like that and we, we kind of miss our own miracle. Um, that I think it's just a great time of spring for us to kind of step back and as we look at all the vibrant colors and all the things happening around us to really look at ourselves and, and to really acknowledge our own transformations. I feel like the mat is this really incredible, unique place that each one of us comes to to really find our transformation. and. Um, and sort of like the caterpillar, like there's something, you know, I, I think it's a really great thing that the caterpillar is all of a sudden really drawn to take this journey out onto this branch. You know, like what is that? Just something deep within the caterpillar knows it needs to do this and makes, makes its way from munching leaves. I mean, let's face it, it would be fun to just munch leaves the rest of your life. Why not? You know, just eat and have fun eating. But something in the caterpillar is like, no, I'm destined for something else reaches out there. And I feel, for me anyway, and for many of you that have gotten to know over the years, that we have sort of that same pull of the caterpillar to our mats. Like something deeper within us drew us here. And even though it's not convenient, it's not easy, it can be frustrating, and um, all those things, that there's still something that keeps pulling us back and back to this branch for us that we call a mat, um, where we take risks. You know, um, and I hope you guys can remember all of that too in the days when you're practicing. Remember, 
you know, how it felt to be a little bit nervous about something or, you know, the first time you were trying to do your headstand and you're wobbling and maybe we wobble for a while before we really can be solid in a headstand and, and what a beautiful transformative process that is. And that too just being a metaphor for the deeper work of yoga that's part of our, our, our spiritual practice and, and um, what pulls us from that place is, is so much more even than what happens to us physically on our mats. Um, I would like you guys to consider this week um, and in, in a way to kind of be reflective of your own transformation and your own miracles is to consider adopting a caterpillar this week. So um, it is the monarch season. This is the beginning of the spring for the monarch season. And so most of you know that the monarch is um, being considered for the endangered list. They, they are endangered and they're considering actually officially putting them on the list. So one of the things that we're trying to do every year is ask you guys to buy milkweed plants and to purchase milkweed plants and to plant them in your yards or pots and to try to um, help get the monarchs um, their population healthy again. So uh, our local nursery that I love, just down the street from the Shala, the Dana Point Nursery, has bunches of milkweed plants right now. I went yesterday and I carefully looked at every single one until I could find one with a little baby caterpillar on it. So I found three plants with baby caterpillars and uh, bought them yesterday and transported my little caterpillars home. One of them was like, walking around on the box and I was like, dude, stay on the plant. It's not safe out there. <laughs> um, but I'd like you guys to adopt a caterpillar and just watch this amazing process of them eating, 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 pooping, eating, pooping for a couple weeks and growing into these absolutely beautiful, cute creatures. I love these creatures. Just enjoy them in your life and enjoy watching this amazing transformation. Next week I'm going to talk a little bit more about what happens when the um, when they're in their chrysalis because that is an amazing story in and of itself. Um, but to enjoy that and to really just kind of be thinking of yourself as you see them and seeing your own transformation in the caterpillars and um, letting them be little messengers to you this week. And as well, I'm hoping that I'm going to hypnotize all of you right now to be um, open to and looking for the butterfly. There's a few monarchs out there right now that are laying their eggs and doing their thing. And I am um, sending the message out there for the monarchs to come visit each one of you. And when they visit you, you will recognize them because you're on the lookout for them. They're, they're going to come to you. And, and the monarch has a message for you. So when your butterfly comes, you'll be like, ah, there you are. Diana said you were coming. And listen to what they have to say. This week, they have something to tell you. It's personal. It's just for you. And I can't wait for you to get it. Namaste.